and welcome to Biz Talk. I am Danish Manzoor and today we are going to talk about golf. A sport where a lot of people burn a lot of money. But it is also a sport which usually does not include the middle class. Now we have an Indian with us today. A person who turned golf into gold for himself and, and his company. I have with me Dhruv Verma from Golfland. Dhruv, welcome to the show. Thank you, Danish. This is pretty interesting, right? When you think of uh, various sporting in India, everybody talks about cricket. We have forgotten hockey from the earlier days. How did the idea of Golfland come in and how did you think of making this into a business? Oh, let me take you back about 10 years. I was a banker. I uh, was doing reasonably okay in my banking career. It got a string to work with a UK company. Went there. And that's when there was a concept of golfing allowance in our paychecks. Pretty intrigued with the idea. I said, why golfing allowance? I would love to have that allowance. Yeah, I, I would love to have it myself. Yeah. And uh, That allowance was basically to entertain your clients and close deals at a golf course. So, golf courses were considered to be a place where the CX level executives come and we close deals. So that's how it all started. Uh, played. That's how I in fact started with golf. Right. Uh, came back to India and one fine day was. Are you a golfer yourself now? I I am a golfer now. Oh, yeah. I, I, the, the sport grows on to you and becomes <laughs> like a virus inside your body. Right. All the golfer friends will agree on that. Mm. Came back to India uh, was that I, I still remember it was a Sunday. I had last evening booked a ticket on book my show for the movie. And I said, okay, let me book a game of golf. Went online. Uh, realized nothing was there. Uh, I said, can't possible. It's not possible. India is booming. It's opening up to the tech global companies, markets, global yeah. markets. But why can't I find a golf course online? I picked up the phone. I called up a couple of golf courses in Delhi. They said, you know what? Uh, just give us your name. We will write it in the register. So that's pretty interesting. Right. Uh, called up a couple of golf courses where I played in the UK. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, I want to book a slot. Can you give me an online link? Same. You know what? Just give us your name and you can come and make the payment. I left myself that night with this idea. Slept over it. Next day, called up a couple of golf courses in the US. Everybody was online. Or they were getting there. In fact, 2010 is, this is 2010. Right. That's when golf now, uh, a big competitor now to us in the US markets was bought over by Golf Channel, the NBC News guys. Right. So, so I, I could clearly see that US has moved ahead, which normally it does in terms of technology. And the golf courses have started going online. But in most of the other global markets, golf is still way behind as far as technology adoption is concerned. Right. Uh, one interesting thing was that I, I did a sample check of what? 80 courses in Delhi, Dubai, London and Singapore. Picked them up randomly and started looking at their websites. About 90% of them had no websites. Forget about online tea time bookings. They had no, they no websites, nothing. No online presence. Uh, that's where the idea started. That there is a possibility of getting these thousands of courses onto a common platform. And then letting users use it online. Right. So that was the problem. That was the you, problem you, statement you which right. I, I figured out. Right. The second thing was golf is, as you rightly said in the beginning, it's the rich man's game. Right. So, and believe me, it's a little intimidating in the forefront, but actually golf is not a rich man's game. And I advocate that fact in a big way. Let me, let me uh, highlight why. Try. Uh, let me try. <laughs> let me try. <laughs> right. uh, the other day, I went for my son's cricket academy admission. It costed me 18,000 rupees for three months for him to enroll into a cricket academy. He could have played golf 20 times and bought a second hand set from, from India and taken at least five to eight coaching sessions in that amount. So from the outside what we see is we only look at those premium courses where the green fee is 5,000 rupees a, a game. They are courses which allow you to pay at 500 rupees. But nobody, nobody you know, has found those courses online, there is no platform. So that, those were the problem statements which we, we discovered. And I Basically said, connecting the you know, golfers with the golf course. Connecting golfers worldwide was actually the first punchline of Golfland way back. Right. And the <laughs> Golfland name is Golf and Land. Right. So Golf 
plus local area network right which connects everybody together were you a techie by any chance no i was a banker uh, I, i was <laughs> doing uh, big deals in banking right. so that really took the better of me perhaps with very bad land connections so that okay let's exactly. use, that. <laughs> let's use that right so, so yeah so that that triggered the whole idea uh, started off in 2011 uh we were ready with the prototype of the products and uh, were all set to go live in 2012 i was very clear from day one that we have to bootstrap uh, i didn't want to get in an uh, investor very early right so did the nine yards of entrepreneurship you know left my job sold my house sold my car sold my wife's jewelry all that ha- all that happens right. when you build Especially a company with bootstrapping yeah uh, uh, of a professional like a salary professional to per se yeah so right. you know when i left my job i i thought you know in seven months or a year we will be breaking even right in seven means i had broken even in fact <laughs> right. i was you know uh, down in and under uh, right. the, i was in my last stint as a employee i was working with airsel looking after the sizable part of their business in india and the moment i switched gears when i became a employer within a year i was wondering what am i doing right you know it, where my i could afford a london trip or the international trip for my children every quarter i was not even able to go to no trip with my children <laughs> in, in a year so right. that's how entrepreneurship changes but i loved every moment of it i think uh, what entrepreneurship does there is it it makes it you know, the heart of steel it brings that out right it brings the heart of steel out that's what happened uh, golf line in year 1 did about 40 lakhs of revenue and we actually made about 4 lakhs mm-hmm. so that was the uh, confidence which triggered in that yes we can do it uh, kept on kept on doing the power of aggregation we used it on two sides one was on the retail golfer for example right. you wanting to book a game of golf but we were very clear that there are a lot of these banks slash premium products that offer certain benefits to their customers for example uh, at that time i remember city bank on one of their premium cards right was offering golf we said why can't we become the service provider to all these brands so we started creating a digital concierge which is a white labeled uh, microsite right and started offering it to most of the financial institutions in india went like a rocket in terms of a product axis bank signed up later hdfc signed up today i think all the leading banks in india work with us so you had the first mover advantage in, in, in this especially in india. they they were players there was one player before us but they he, they were not leveraging on technology okay. so we had the first mover advantage of aggregation and technology put together right how big is the market size you know if you talk about the, this market right so this is something interesting people don't know this and you know you will be surprised it's a 70 billion dollar market globally or just globally right uh, and people think that because we wear the india lens right. we say okay golf is too small but too small. it's a 70 billion dollar market right uh, the the intention was very clear that india will become our head of building in all the technology we would want it to leverage on the fact of cost of the east and the revenue of the west the first market to open was dubai uh, the second market to open was singapore right uh, today we are present in about five countries generating revenue from all these markets and you also have plans to move to us now oh uh, well us is around the corner uh, we are all set i was there last month mm-hmm. we have signed up the contract to set up the company there and we all set to go live by early march Right. We'll be, in fact, one of the first sports technology companies from India mm-hmm. going live in the US. That's really wonderful. Now, you've spoken about sports technology and aggregation and stuff. There's still a, a bit of halo around the fact that what exactly is it that Golfland does in terms of technology, and what solutions do you offer? What are your products like? Okay, uh, so we do. We work on three different product lines. One, aggregation. Uh, when I say aggregation, we create uh, products for all the banks. where a customer from a bank can come on my microsite which is basically a white label microsite book a game of golf for themselves and the bank pays me every month so i charge the bank on every users that's my corporate aggregation platform right uh, on the other side i have saas products the first product is stay prime a company that we acquired stay prime yeah stay prime, prime a company that we acquired 2 years back it's a fleet management technology wherein my products go on most of the golf carts mm-hmm. which are manufactured and we are able to track uh, pace of play management user analysis uh, we are able to create fnb revenues 
and so on and so forth. And this product is for golf courses or for the golfers? So the golf courses lease the technology from us right. and deploy it in their golf carts. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's uh, the other side. Okay. Third is my uh, SaaS product lines for golf courses to digitize their tee times. Mm -hmm. So most of the courses do not have a technology wherein they can bring their tee times online. So Golf Centra, which is my product there, helps golf courses come online under the mobile app platform and be visible to the larger audience. And also track... Uh, yeah, so track spends, mm -hmm. track uh, scoring. So a lot of things can be done via the Golf Centra app itself. Mm -hmm. It's again, the golf courses pay me for that. Mm -hmm. It's a SaaS business where my customer is a golf course and it's a B2B2C business. Right. Now, one interesting thing which I've noticed is that you've had quite a number of acquisitions uh, through the journey of your company, right, uh, Golfland. Uh, what, where did the idea of these acquisitions come in? Because usually people in India, the entrepreneurs especially I've seen it, they prefer to build products ground up instead of going out there and using the money that they have in acquiring products which are already there. Uh, two theories. One, my banking experience did help me a little bit there. Uh, we as bankers were, told, were taught to negotiate hard and get the right deal in our favor. That came in handy. Second, uh, I always believe that Build versus buy, you have to do a very careful analysis. Right. And if, if buy is logical, let's go ahead with buy. Now, buy has two sides to it. Let's look at the positive side. Uh, you get something which is already built. You have customers using your technology. And you have a team which is already delivering. The other side, in, in our case especially, was uh, we were mainly buying companies outside of India. So there was a cultural conflict. Right. There I was, was going to come to that. Pretty yeah, interesting. There yeah. were people from different nationalities. And right. trust me, working with an Indian company is not that easy because our value set is is very frugal. You know, it's not that flamboyant. Right. So that cultural fitment was is is a key. Then comes the fact of how do we use different technologies, merge them together, and so on and so forth. I always and then bring them together to the same umbrella. Of exactly, that. build them. Right. You know, make them all run in sync. Right. That's the most difficult part. Right. Uh, not only technology, but people as well. People as well. There could be a founder of a company that you are buying. Now, his dream would have been that he wanted to become the biggest company in the world on on his for his product. But now the product, the company is not his. The values so have changed. Values have changed. Right. The whole ball game has changed. So, from an employer, he has become an employee. So the transition is. Uh, mostly very difficult. That's why 90% of the acquisitions fail. Exactly. Uh, so, I, I in, the, in the golf space, I was very clear that I will not rebuild technology if it's available outside and available at the right price. Mm -hmm. uh, to our uh, you know, good luck, we did find Stay Prime as our first venture that we got into, which was available at a reasonably right price point for us. We went ahead with it. Uh, I am a strong believer of speed. If you lack speed, you create uh, entry barriers which are reverse in nature for yourself. <laughs> right. So uh, that was the first acquisition. The second one was in Singapore, a company called Golf Greedy. Uh, that was more of an entry strategy into Southeast Asia. We were wanting to leverage on a particular platform to enter. The third one was Golf Centra, which was a SaaS platform, a mobile app for golf courses. Again, we got the technology already ready at the right price so mm -hmm. we didn't hesitate even once now the interesting question as you mentioned like you know when when you know in all the b schools we get this uh, this classic case of airtel's entry into south africa and all how there was a cultural mismatch also right so as you also briefly mentioned i'm quite you know sort of intrigued and in trying to understand how did you manage that the mismatch in terms of values between your company the parent company and the companies which you acquired and how did that uh, sort of come across uh, the first thing we did was we opened up to the fact that now we are working with different nationalities. Right. If I would have continued to only think that we are an Indian company and we will not change, it, things would have been a little difficult. And they were, trust me, it was not that easy. But we had to you know, take two steps further and then the other parties involved had to take, take two steps further towards us. Right. And that's how the, the whole thing came together. Uh, but it's not that easy as, 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 you know, as we say it. It takes a lot of effort on right. both the sides. To make it happen. There is no magic formula. Right. The only magic formula, if there is any, is trust. And that lacks the most when you are working across different cultures, different nationalities. So I think we did a reasonably okay job in creating a lot of trust and harmony between the teams, right. which went in our favor. 
Now talking about uh, fundraising and that is something that every bootstrapped company or startup, you know, they look forward to it, raising money and all. How was your journey of raising funds and how difficult was it? It all happened at the golf courses. <laughs> so uh, I, the first investors who came in, Yonesh, I met him over the game of golf. and Obviously he, he's a golfer so they loved it. Yonesh Angel Fund, Mr. Sunil Goel and uh, they came on board. Uh, subsequently, most of the investors today that we have met, we I met them either at a golf so course. golf business where you met the investors at the golf course. Exactly. So, you know, it's like everything was sort of uh, in sync. In sync. Uh, right. The journey was, was tough at times. You know, you, you don't always have a, a rosy quarter, a rosy half year, rosy year. There were times when we got stuck. Uh, there were times that when we were, especially two years back, when we required two companies back to back, one in Dubai, one in Singapore. Uh, without estimating the exact fund requirement of these two. So we had to take a back step, rethink our strategy and uh, just just keep moving on. I think one thing which the, my team did very well, they were very open to change. I strongly feel that if you don't keep changing yourself based on the needs of the market, you can fall flat. Right. So that's something which we did reasonably well. Now in terms of uh, fundraising, if I give you a magic figure for your next uh, you know, round in case you're going for it, what would ideally be uh, the number that you would be looking at raising? We are at the moment raising about $5 million right. for our global expansion, especially our US launch. And we, sh we are looking at closing this round by mid of this year. So expansions and perfecting the existing solutions that we have. Yes. There's always you have to strike a balance as, a, as an entrepreneur in these things, right? With all these expansion that you are talking about, going to the US and all, do you think you'll be stretching yourself too thin? Uh, so there's a concept of going too deep or going too wide. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, individual decision making for the CEO and the founder on what is right, what is wrong. Right. I strongly believe that depth is something that is required. But you can only go deep if you have the right products. If you don't have the right products, there's no point going deep. True. Uh, so we, we are trying to strike a balance. Is it right or wrong? Time will tell. Till now, things have proved right for us. Right. Uh, we will be looking at a couple of more acquisitions this year. But 2019, we want to be a zero acquisition year. Right. So all the you know, golfing companies out there, beware, he's coming for you. <laughs> right. No, it's been interesting. You know, the, the whole perspective of Golfland has right. changed, especially in the Asia market. I've met a lot of my friends who are founders of different golf startups and they, they, they meet us very fondly now. Hmm. So I, I am happy with the thinking that they have in mind. Right. I want them to live with that. Right. So we are in conversation with Dhruv Verma of Golfland right now. In case you have any questions, do write in below. And in case we are not able to take it right now, we'll take it at a later stage and perhaps Dhruv will answer those questions for you in case you are an entrepreneur. Uh, so now talking about uh, the fact that I heard that you have some uh, cloud-based smart golf solutions plan, which you call as Made in India. Uh, cloud-based solution. Tell us more about that. Uh, it's Golf Centra, a very recent uh, golf SaaS platform that we are launching. It's a product which will create a mobile app for the golf course in flat two days. The product has been received very well. I was there for the PGA show in Orlando last month and we were showcasing the product to quite a few courses. It's the first made in India SaaS mobile app uh, for golf courses mm -hmm. and uh, we, we got a brilliant reception for that. Uh, especially our ability to think that deep in terms of user requirement mapping and our turnaround time to be able to create a mobile app for the golf course in two days is going in our favor. And especially the, the cost factor does come in. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, US when you compare the cost factors to a company which is offering a product from India, we do have an advantage. Advantage out there, right. Now hiring uh, the right people in a company, in a startup is really, really important as seen by most of the founders. And at the same time, the money which you have raised, spending it wisely. I would like you to elaborate. How did you overcome these two hurdles? How are you still overcoming these two hurdles? Well, hiring is one of your ongoing challenges. Right. Uh, I think if, if you're able to get the right team mix, you're sorted as a founder. We've been working very hard to bring in people whom are able, who are able to adjust to the value system. I am a strong believer of the value system concept. If the value system is right, people will do well. Mm -hmm. Because then the team can think in sync. If the value system is wrong, you can fall flat. So 
uh, today as golf land we have about seven different nationalities working for us from people from mexico to people from uk to to a gentleman from south africa to a gentleman from china so we have a, a mixture of different nationalities all working together all working in sync all enjoying the the kadi chawal and the rajma chawal <laughs> so that that's that's gone in our favor but it's a long way to go right we will be hiring about 50 more people in the next 18 months so and this will again come from different geographies right. mainly from india because the headquarter in terms of technology and ops is in india but yes there will be other roles as well so and now spending the money which you have raised spending it wisely how do you sort of uh, do that i only spend if i earn so my mantra to all my team members is spend the money if you are earning it don't spend it because you want a customer to come and use your service this is my view right especially i don't want anybody to play golf at my cost yeah so we have followed that from day one uh, and that has really worked for us uh, today i am we, we are proud as a organization that we have raised a little under 2 million dollars but we are sitting at revenues close to 2 and a half 3 million dollars in most cases the the the, the numbers are where a company raises 10 million dollars and reaches 2 and a half million dollars we have raised little capital and achieved quite a bit Uh, so that's worked in our favor. Right now, before we you know wrap this episode today, I would like you to address the youngsters out there who have their ideas and they want to start their own startups. As a founder who has managed to take his startup places and also raised a considerable amount of funding as well, what would your advice be to them? Well, my advice would be just just one: if you have a dream, if you believe in it, go for it, uh, and go for it with the fact, with the belief. that there will be issues there will be problems the journey will be not smooth a lot of entrepreneurs today believe that we have an idea and we want to be valued at 10 million dollars and get a funding of 2 million dollars come out of that thinking look back in be ready that to take a dive in that ocean where you will have sharks you will have everybody trying to eat you up but you will come out and become a successful company don't be afraid just go for it Well, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, that was Dhruv Verma from Golfland. Thank you very much, Dhruv. Pleasure Thank talking you, to you. And we'll see you next week with a new episode, with a new founder, and a new story. Till then, do take good care of yourselves. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh-huh.